What happened? Why are you so funny now? How come you now know everything about RuPaul's Drag Race? Why do you suddenly have an affinity for significant female pop singers? All jokes aside, you are now displaying homosexual tendencies along with your soldiers. But why? Bremelonatide. So what is Bremelonatide? It is a molecule that is structurally similar to the naturally occurring peptides in the body called melanocortins. These melanocortins are known to play a, a role in various physiological processes, including sexual function. Bromelanotide specifically acts as an agonist at certain subtypes of melanocortin receptors, meaning it binds to and activates these receptors. Bromelanotide is a large component in treating HSDD because of its function in increasing sexual desire. So what is HSDD? HSDD stands for Hypoactive Sexual Desire Disorder. It is experienced in an estimate of 1 in 10 premenopausal women in the United States. Bromelanotide, sold under the brand name Vilisi, is meant for women who have experienced low to no sexual desires in the past and or currently. By activating these melanocortin receptors in the brain, bromelanotide can increase sexual arousal and desire in women. Let's talk about the FDA. In 2019, the FDA approved of a new drug for women with low sexual desire disorder. This new drug is called Vilisi, which is a bromelanotide injection. The cost for a Vilisi subcutaneous injection solution of 1.75 milligrams or 0.3 milliliters is approximately $956 for a supply of 1.2 milliliters, which is four doses. But Vilisi is covered by most insurance plans for patients with HSDD. So what does it do? Um, in preclinical studies, bromelanotide has been shown to increase sexual desire, uh, leading to its investigation as a potential treatment for sexual dysfunction, especially in heterosexual women. However, it is important to note that bromelanotide is still an experimental drug, and its safety and efficacy in humans has have not been fully established. For example, like we have no idea what it does to babies, so it's not recommended for a pregnant woman to take it. So let's talk about the gay bomb that we started with. So was that actually a thing? The gay bomb was a non-lethal weapon that was proposed by the US military during the early stages of the Iraq war. According to reports and leaked documents, the concept involved the use of a chemical agent that contained bromelanotide that would make enemy soldiers sexually attracted to each other, weakening their power from within. It was researched and experimented on, but it was ultimately deemed inhumane, causing all research on it to halt. So let's get into the structure of bromelanotide. It's a cyclic analog of alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone, a melanocortin. So here you can see it, this is alpha MSH. And on the right hand side, you have bromelanotide. And you can see this is a cyclic molecule. On the other hand, you have a peptide. So alpha MSH is a peptide secreted into the bloodstream. It's a hormone and it binds to the melanocortin type 4 receptor, MC4R, which is important for appetite and sexual motivation. So some of these papers um, study more into the relationship between MC4R and sexual motivation. And then here's a paper that just goes more on to how um, analogs have similar effects on humans, the sexual desire of humans. So the history of bromelanotide. So analogs of bromelanotide have been studied since the early 1960s at the University of Arizona. One scientist, Mac Hadley, injected himself with twice the recommended dosage of melanotin-2, which is an analog of bromelanotide. Uh, he suffered an eight-hour erection followed by extreme uh, vomiting and nausea. In 2004, King's Pharmaceutical and Paladin co-developed bromelanotide in the U.S. The FDA stopped trials due to possible dangers that arose in the phase two trials, including elevated blood pressures in those that were tested in the trial. Phase three trials resumed in 2014 after being reformulated and became FDA approved in 2018, which is relatively new, after it was changed to a full injection after phase three trials. So why is bromelanotide important? The target audiences for bromelanotide include female cancer survivors and premenopausal women who, who experience HSDD. Their sexual desires are negatively impacted and affects their quality of life. So let's talk about how bromelanotide is administered. Since bromelanotide is a peptide, it has poor oral bioavailability. Thus, bromelanotide needs to be self-administered through the parental route, also known as 
the subcutaneous route into the abdomen or thigh, which has 100% bioavailability. Bromelanotide is associated with few to no drug-to-drug -drug interactions, and unlike flibanserin, does not adversely interact with alcohol. There are thousands of women who take Vilesi to help with their HSDD. Let's hear a review from a woman who takes Vilesi to help. I'm a 35-year-old mom to two girls. I've been with my husband for 20 years and I have HSDD. I noticed that I had low drive. I wasn't really in the mood at all. I was incredibly frustrated. I went into my doctor's office and I saw a PA. There has to be something out there that you can give me. So she pulled out a sample of a pen called Vilesi and said this is a new drug to market to help increase your libido. Within 30 minutes, um, I did notice that I had some really red cheeks. Um, my heart was racing a little bit, but that, um, I felt a sensation rush from my head to my toes. I, I felt desire. My Lisi has changed my life. I'm so glad I found it. As previously stated, bromelanotide became FDA approved in 2019, making it a relatively new drug. The mechanism in terms of bromelanotide is still largely unknown. As bromelanotide is an injection, those can experience minor side effects that use it. Things such as allergies and rashes may appear at the site of injection. The recommended dosage for one dose of bromelanotide is one within a 24 hour time period and no more than eight times a month. Bromelanotide is not recommended to be used during pregnancy or breastfeeding as the consequences of using it are still relatively unknown. It was previously stated that Vilesi could be used with almost any medication or even alcohol, but there is one interaction that should be avoided. It is not recommended to use Vilesi along with an orally administrated naltrexone medication, which is used to combat alcohol and opioid dependency and addiction. If you use Vilesi with an orally administrated naltrexone, there is a great chance that you can essentially relapse. From two identical 24-week controlled trials, the FDA concluded that these are the common side effects, nausea with about 40% of participants experiencing it, flushing at 20%, headaches at 11%, vomiting at about 5%, coughing at 3%, dizziness at 2.2%, and stuffy nose at 2.1%. Some major side effects of bromelanotide include high blood pressure, Bromelanotide should not be taken if someone has a history of cardiovascular issues. Other side effects may include severe nausea, slow heartbeats, severe headaches, and blurry vision. 1.1% of Vilesi treated patients suffered from serious adverse reactions. And here are our references if you would like to learn about bromelanotide further.